Hello students, this is the first video on dividend decision. In this video, I will cover the concept of Walter's model, assumptions and solved problems covering the concept of growth firm, constant firm and declining firm. This video is very helpful for the students of BCom, BBA, MCom, MBA, CA, CS and CMS students and the students who are studying financial management as a subject or specialization. So let's start this video. Walter's model. Professor James E. Walter is one of the eminent authors who has suggested the concept of relevance approach towards the dividend decisions. Relevance approach here refers to he argued that the dividend decisions will have the impact on the value of the firm in the sense the share price of the firm increases or decreases based on the decision of dividend. So that's the reason why he comes under the category of relevance approach concept. James E. Walter emphasized on rate of return and cost of capital. These are the two most important parts of the Walter model. According to the Walter model, what he says, he says that if rate of return is greater than K, that is cost of capital, then the shareholders can earn a higher return by investing in the company. In the sense, they need not to withdraw the amount in the form of dividend. Instead, they should again reinvest the same amount in the business so that they can earn more because R is greater than K. Rate of return is greater than cost of capital. Whereas if R equals to K, the rate of return and cost of capital both are same. In such a case, it is indifferent whether you withdraw the money in the form of dividend or you retain the money in the business even. Whereas if the R is less than K, in this case, the Walters suggest that instead of retaining the money in the business, we should withdraw the money because business is not performing well and it is earning less than the cost of capital. That's the reason why our rate of return is less than cost of capital. Based on this concept, we will understand how to solve the problem and how to calculate the value of the firm that is share price of the firm. Assumptions before going and proceeding and moving ahead with regards to the problems, we will understand what are the assumptions, standard assumption he has. He says that firm has only one source of finance that is internal source. The firm does not use debt or equity mix or any other source, only internal source. The firm has constant return and cost of capital. He says that return that is R and K will be constant. There is no change. The firm has 100% payout in the sense firm should be in a position to pay 100% dividend if required. The firm has constant EPS, earning per share will remain same and dividend will remain same. The firm has a very long life. So these are the basic assumptions based on which he has derived a formula for calculation of the value of firm or value of equity share. So we will understand now the formula. If you see this formula, what he says P is equals to D by KE. KE here refers to K, cost of equity, plus R into E minus D by KE, whole divided by KE. This is the formula he has suggested. P is equals to market price of the equity share, D is equals to dividend per share, R is equals to internal rate of return, R, IRR, R, what we call rate of return that is earned by the company. Whereas E is equals to earning per share, K is equals to or K is equals to cost of equity capital. Based on this formula, we have to calculate the value of the firm. We'll take up the question to understand better. The following information is available in respect of a firm. Capitalization rate that is K is equals to or KE is equals to 10%. Earning per share is 50 rupees EPS. Assume that the rate of invest rate of return on investment is uh, first bit is 12%, second bit is 8% and third option is 10%. Based on these three uh, situations, we have to calculate the value of the firm by assuming R is equals to 12, 8 and 10%. Show the effect of dividend policy on market price of the share applying Walter's formula when dividend payout ratio is Different payout ratios we have given A 0%, B 20%, 40%, 80% and 100%. If we make the dividend payout ratio in the sense if we make the different percentages of dividend 
out of our EPS, what will be the value of the firm that we need to calculate. So let's solve this problem. Then you will understand better what is dividend policy and what is Walter model and his arguments. Right, I have taken the question again. So we will come to the answer. So for calculation of the answer, we have formula P is equals to D by K plus R, by R into E minus D by K E, that is K whole divided by K cost of equity. So first situation, we have to take R is equals to 12%. When we take R is equals to 12%, uh, we have to calculate the value of share under four situations. Sorry, not four, five situations. A, B, C, D and E with different dividend payout ratios. The first one I have taken when dividend payout ratio is zero. When we pay zero percent dividend, we don't pay anything. In such a case, what will be the dividend? How to calculate dividend? That is EPS into dividend payout ratio. Here in this case, EPS is 50, dividend payout ratio is zero. So dividend payout is zero. Then we apply the formula P is equals to D is 0, 0 by KE that is 0 0.1, 10% in the sense 0 0.1. Here please bear in mind K is equals to 10% is given in the question. So 0 by 10% that is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.12 that is 12% divided by 0 0.1 that is K into 50 is the EPS minus 0, dividend is 0, D is 0 divided by 0 0.1 that is k that is cost of equity if you simplify this equation we are getting the value of the share is 600 rupees in the first situation a bit that is dividend payout ratio is zero when you take up the second bit when dividend payout ratio is 20 percent how we got the 20 percent that is given in the question how to calculate the 20 percent 50 rupees is the eps into 20 percent that is 20, 10 rupees is our D. D stands for here 10 rupees because 50, per, 50 rupees into 20 percent. So when you apply the formula D we have taken 10 right. Rest of the things that is K is same. R is same that is 0 0.1. R is equals to 0 0.1 to 12 percent. Then 50 minus 10 that is 50 rupees is the EPS minus dividend is 10 rupees whole divided by 0 0.1. If you simplify this equation, you are getting the answer is 580 rupees is the value of share. In the same way, third situation that is C bit, in this 40%, 50 rupees into 40%, four, sorry, 20 rupees is the dividend. Then simplify the equation, you are getting dividend, we have taken 20, 20 rupees here, right? Then we got the value of the share is 560 rupees. In the same way, D bit, when dividend payout is 80%, 50 into 80%, that is 40 rupees. So we are getting 520 rupees is the value of share. Then C, sorry, EBIT. When dividend payout is 100%, total EPS we have paid as dividend. So 50 rupees into 100%, that is 50 rupees. So value of the firm is 500. So like this, we have to calculate by taking R is equals to 12%, the value of the share under different situation with different payout ratios. And the second is R is equals to 10% we have taken. K is also 10%, R is also 10%. In this case, the first one, dividend payout ratio is 0%. The same we have to take. When we pay 0% dividend, what is the value of the firm? That is 500 rupees. When we pay 20% dividend, the value of the firm is 500. Then 40% dividend, value of the firm is 500. The same formula we have applied, just have changed the dividend. Clear? And you can simplify the equation, you will get the answer. Whereas dividend payout ratio is 80%, even 500. Dividend payout ratio is 100%, even 500. In all the situations, A to E, the value of the share we are getting only 500. In this case, R is equals to 10% as well as K is also 10%. The third situation is, R is equals to 8%. In this case, what is happening? When dividend payout ratio is 0%, the value of the firm is 400. When dividend payout ratio is 20%, value of the firm that is equity share value is how much? 420 rupees. Then the value of the firm, if dividend payout ratio is 40%, 440 rupees. 
so on if it is 80 percent 480 rupees if it is 100 percent the value is 500 rupees so we have calculated the value of share in all the three situations that is r is equals to 12 percent r is equals to 10 percent and r is equals to 8 percent so we are getting different values of the share price right that is market values so first one is 600 in situation 1 r is equals to 12 percent and k is equals to 10 percent bear in mind k is 10 percent r is 12 percent 600 when dividend payout ratio is increasing if you withdraw more amount the value of the share is declining if you observe when you are withdrawing 0 percent as dividend the value of the firm was 600 when you are withdrawing more amount in the form of dividend from the company from the business your value of the share is declining that is 580 rupees 560 rupees 520 and 500 rupees this is very significant change that you you have to understand as well as observe in the next situation sorry this is called as a growth firm r is greater than k in the sense in the first slide i have explained that walter suggested that if r is greater than k rate of return is greater than cost of capital instead of withdrawing the amount in the form of dividend better to reinvest in the firm so that we can earn more profits more income more money so that's what if you keep the money in the business the value of the firm is more that is 600 if you going on withdrawing the money the value of the firm is that is share price is declining this is what is called as a growth firm r is greater than k in the second situation the irrespective of your dividend payout ratio the value of the share is remain same that is 500 this is called as constant firm or normal firm where r is equals to k r is also 10 percent k is also 10 percent in the third situation r is 8 percent if you have a uh, zero percent dividend payout the value of the firm was 400 rupees when you are increasing the dividend payout ratio the value of the firm that is share price is also increasing in this case what will happen if you r is less than k here what is happening this is called as a declining firm r is less than k in this case the r is eight percent k is ten percent therefore when r is less than k what will happen the Walter model suggests that instead of retaining money in the business since you are earning less than cost of capital better to withdraw the money clear so when you are increasing your dividend payout ratio the value of the firm is also increasing which is quite opposite to the growth firm clear where R is equals to R is greater than K I hope I gave you the entire crux of this clear so in this way we can divide the firm into three categories growth constant or normal firm or declining firm so this are this is the basic crux now what is the optimum dividend payout ratio in first situation first situation the optimum dividend payout ratio is zero percent because r is greater than k in the sense you should not withdraw anything you should reinvest in the business then only your firm value increases r is greater than k optimum dividend payout ratio is zero percent in second situation constant firm r is e equals to k that is indifferent whether you withdraw whether you retain the value of the firm that is share price will remain same in the third situation which is when it is a declining firm r is greater than sorry r is less than k it is called as a declining firm where dividend payout ratio should be 100 percent instead of retaining the money in the business you should withdraw the money that is dividend payout ratio is 100 percent i hope i have given the clear picture so this is the most important concept of the walter model you know must bear in mind whenever you are studying dividend decision under walter model I don't think so any other video has given the clear picture but I have kept my best efforts to give you the clarity clear so dividend payout ratios are optimum is r is greater than k 0% r equals to k indifferent r is less than k 100% these are the standard things you bear in mind.
right we'll take up the next question so this is one more question a company which earns 5 rupees eps capitalization that is k is equals to 10 percent and r is equals to 12 percent using the walters model determine the optimum payout and the price of the share at this payout so it is quite clear when the r is greater than k r is 12 percent k is 10 percent so it is a growth firm so what is the optimum payout ratio just now we spoke about that is zero percent so when you come to the answer the formula the same formula k is equals to 10 percent r is equals to 12 percent r is greater than k therefore it is a growth firm then optimum payout ratio should be zero when we calculate at this level zero percent dividend d is equals to zero we got the value of the firm that is share price is 60 rupees so this is the precise way of calculation of the value of the firm that is share price i hope i have given the clear picture with the help of these two problems i have given this question as an example sorry as an exercise for you people please do solve this problem i will provide the answer of this this question in the next video that is dividend decision second video where i will cover gordon's model next author who has given the again relevance approach the formula how to calculate the value of the firm or value of the share under that gordon model that i will cover in the next video there i will provide the answer of this question so i hope i have given the entire crux of the walter model under dividend decision first video right so please do subscribe my channel motivate me i am putting my best efforts and you can use thanks button to motivate me and contribute for this channel your small contributions will create lot of difference in providing the quality content then criticism of walter's model when you come to the criticism of Walter's model, this model has been criticized, right? Walter model assumes that there are there is no external finance, which is not practically possible. There would be some external finance exist. There is no possibility of constant return and cost of capital. See, cost of capital and return R and K fluctuates based on the market situations. It is not constant always. According to Walter's model, it is based on the constant cost of capital, but it's not it's the same thing. So cost of capital and return will not be same. It will fluctuate. So these are the basic criticisms of the Walter model, right? So I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching the video. Do subscribe my channel, mentor the trusted guide and motivate me to make more qualitative and informative videos. Thank you very much.